Hello everybody, in this lecture we will be solving uh, 2017 USA JMO problem number 3. This is a geometry problem. Uh, we are given a triangle ABC with its circumcenter and orthocenter as well. So let's start by drawing the circum circle first and then we can go ahead and um, and draw our tri oops, sorry for that. Uh, draw our triangle like that I assume that's our triangle ABC okay a B C the ortho center um, no, will be somewhere um yeah so it's no actually uh, let's go back yeah so that's better actually um, so it would probably be, yeah, so somewhere here, that's H, and the circumcenter would be, if you call the midpoint of BC as M, and by the way, M is given in the question as well as the midpoint of BC, so I draw a perpendicular bisector here, so eyeballing the, um, um, yeah, why not, so probably somewhere here is our point. O, the, 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 uh, the circumcenter. Now, finally, the point D is on the angle bisector, but the angle bisector, the A angle bisector, will hit the circumcircle at the midpoint of arc BC. Huh? So, this arc is equal to this. Let's call this point as P. So, therefore, if I draw this line, boom. So, this point here is D. And just to clarify, this area is a little bit nasty here. So let's just, uh, so this is a perpendicular bisector here, uh, that's the point M, these are where the uh, line, B, line segment BC and the angle bisector meet, and finally we are told that we are supposed to draw the circumcircle of BHC, um, now before I draw the circumcircle of BHC, I would like to remind you of uh, a very interesting result, so let me draw an alternative picture here. We have this, um, and I would like to make the following claim. So I claim basically that the circumcircle of BHC here is in fact a reflection of the circumcircle of triangle ABC. Um, so let's prove that claim. So consider this triangle ABC. Let's uh, locate the ortho center, which is, so this is a 90 degree angle, this is a 90 degree angle. The, uh, the altitudes meet at the uh, ortho center here, that's the point H. So what I claim is the following. So um, let's call this point, I guess, K here, and then this the foot of the altitude as L, and consider, um, okay, sorry for that, consider, um, I will connect BK and uh, KC as well, and let's do a little bit of angle chasing here. Um, so let me use a different color, so let me enlarge the picture. So consider the following angles. If you focus on, so if you, I call this one L1, let's call the foot here as L2 and L3 here. So if you focus on triangle BCL3, um, you realize that because this whole angle is BABC, so this angle would be uh, on that triangle, so this angle would be 90 minus B, because there's a 90 degree angle here. In a similar way, focus on triangle BCL2, this angle here would simply be 90 minus C. But then, uh, noticing on triangle ABC, angle B subtends this arc AC, but that arc is also subtended here. So, so therefore, this angle here is, um, is B, right? So let me uh, clear this L1 notation here. So the foot of the altitude here is L1. So this angle here is B because they subtend the same arc. In a similar way, this angle comes out as C. Now, finally, uh, lo look at this angle, angle uh, L1BK. So this angle subtends arc KC, but this arc is also subtended by this angle. And that angle, if you focus on triangle AL1C, is simply equal to 90 minus C. So this is 90 minus C. So therefore, this angle here is also 90 minus C. And finally, focusing on this angle, which subtends arc BK, that arc is also subtended by this angle, but then focusing on triangle ABL1, it's a right triangle, 
So, um, so this angle here would be 90 minus B, uh, B here, sorry for that. So therefore, this is 90 minus B. But then, wow, so we have a, a very nice uh, deltoid, I guess. Huh? That's what they call this shape, I guess. So BH is equal to BK. You have an isosceles triangle here because we have an altitude which bisects this angle HBK. Both of these angles are 90 minus C each. And then here the same thing. L1C bisects, uh, L1C is an altitude in triangle HCK, but at the same time it's an angle bisector. So, uh, so as a result, you have another isosceles triangle here. So two isosceles triangles on top of each other. So HBK is isosceles as is uh, HCK. But then the altitude of an isosceles triangle will bisect the base. So therefore HL1 is equal to L1K. So let me write that down. H L1 is equal to L1K. So, long story short, BC is the perpendicular bisector of HK. But then, now not, going back to our original picture, um, so what we, what we have is if I extend this um, altitude here to meet uh, the circumcircle of ABC at this point, it turns out that uh, so these two uh, lengths are equal. But now notice on, uh, first let's notice on, um, fo let's focus on the circumcircle. So if you call this point here as, uh, let's keep the notation, let's call this one as K. So the circumcircle of ADC is at the same time the circumcircle of triangle BKC, BKC, but, uh, uh, but triangle BKC is congruent by the previous uh, result here that I got earlier is congruent to triangle BHC. So as a result, the circumcircle of BHC must have the same size as the circumcircle of BKC, but they both pass through the points B and C. The only explanation is that the circumcircle of BHC is in fact um, a reflection of the circumcircle of ABC across the, the, the side BC. So as a result, if I have to draw it, so probably, um, sorry for that, um, so it would be basically the same size F as our uh, circle here. Okay, good. Now, final step, um, a final step is to, uh, is to draw, uh, let me make it slightly smaller here, is to identify the point N, which is basically um, on the circumcircle of BHC, and at the intersection with the ray MO. Uh, so yeah, my, my picture is really messy, sorry for that. But let's assume that the point N is right here. And it doesn't have to be, well, it's different than the point O, by the way. Um, so ju just to clarify the picture, let me uh, take the point O a little bit higher up. I know it's kind of um, not a very accurate picture, but at least I can uh, clean this mess a little bit. There you go. So, so therefore, this is the point N here, and that one is the point O, the circumcenter. Okay, now therefore, we are told that the intersection of BHC, the circumcircle, and ray MO is N, and therefore, finally, we need to prove that angle ADO, which is, um, actually, let me enlarge the picture so that everybody is on the same page. So, this angle here is the claim is equal to HAN. Um, like if I extend this one, we need to show that that angle is equal to that angle here. So show this basically. Before we begin, let's make a very critical observation. Let me use a green pencil here. Uh, the critical observation is that AH is in fact parallel to OM. Why is that? Because well, because they are both perpendicular to, 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 to side BC of our triangle. So therefore, AH, and let me put this uh, symbol here, is parallel to OM. Let me write that down. AH is parallel to OM. But this implies that angle uh, HAN, the desired angle, basically, HAN, is simply equal to angle, so, so let me extend this line, it's basically equal to angle A and O, but they are alternate interior angles, so angle A and O. So therefore, the question 
is basically asking you, huh? so this angle here uh, is basically equal to that angle. Let me put two double strikes. They are both alternate interior angles. So to show that these two angles are equivalent uh, boils down to showing that, um, if you will, um, alternatively, you can show that um, quadrilateral A, D, and O is cyclic. So this is equivalent result. Do you see that? If A, D, and O is truly cyclic, angle A, D, O would simply intercept uh, ray A, O. In a similar way, angle A, N, O, which is equal to H, A, N, by the way, also intercepts the same arc of this uh, cyclic quadrilateral. So therefore, the problem just reduces to showing that A, D, and O is cyclic. The trick is to drop an, uh, an, uh, an altitude from point O to the line uh, A, D. So when you do that, uh, notice that. So if I call this point as, uh, I'm using just the official solution notation here, O prime. O prime is the foot of the altitude from O to the line uh, segment AD. You just realize that because AP is a chord of our the circumcircle of ADC, O prime must be the midpoint of AP, right? So therefore, AO prime is equal to O prime P. And that's it. And that's it. So now let's uh, let, let, let's make uh, the following observation. Notice that um, notice that in this picture uh, we have a cyclic quadrilateral, namely uh, O, O prime, D, M are cyclic, and the reason is simple because because both angles O O prime uh, D and uh, O M D O M D are equal to 90 degree each. So opposite angles, they add up to 180 degrees. As a result, uh, this is a cyclic quadrilateral. But then knowing it is cyclic, I can use the power of a point, uh, well, the power of point P with respect to this circle, O, O prime, D, M. So the power of point at P, huh? the power of a point at P with respect to this circle, with respect to um, circle uh, o, O prime D, M, huh? so the circumcircle of this is equal to basically what? P, D uh, times P, O prime is equal to P, uh, P, M times P, O, P, M times P, O. But now notice, re remember that uh, a, O prime was the midpoint of A, P, as a result, uh, this uh, I can replace P O prime with uh, A P over two, and similarly P M due to this uh, nice symmetry that we just talked about, uh, because um, the circumcircle of B H C is uh, is is merely a reflection of the circumcircle of A B C across the side B C. So therefore, uh, the point P and the point N are reflections of each other across uh, B C. So therefore. N M, so this this uh, so therefore this implies that N M is equal to M P basically. So what it what it means is that P M I can replace P M with P N over two times P O. But then uh, simplifying the twos would simply implies that P D times oops that's a D sorry for that P D times A P is equal to P M times P O. Let me um just okay so that's better. But hey, look, PD times AP, PD times uh, AP is equal to PN times PO is basically by the converse of power of a point. Huh? This would simply imply that the points D, A, N, and O are cyclic. But that's exactly what we needed to prove. We needed to prove that A, D, and O are cyclic, and boom, we have that by converse of uh, power of a point theorem and that basically uh, solves the problem hope you enjoyed this video uh, i will see you guys in our next lecture